Hi, Jerry Jenkins here talking about all things writing. Today, writing from a first person point of view. From childhood, we've all told stories in the first person using I, me, my. It's the simplest way to relay an experience. It can also be the best point of view to write from, especially if you're a beginner. Why? Because it can help you avoid some common writing pitfalls. First, let me define point of view because it's really two things. First, it's the voice from which you tell your story, first person, using I, me, my, second person, using you and your, or third person, he, she, or it. But also, point of view defines your perspective character. Your POV character should be seen as the camera and recorder through which your story is revealed to readers. Your perspective character answers the question, whose story is this? Now, before we go further, you need to know the cardinal rule of point of view. You must limit yourself to one perspective character per scene, preferably per chapter, ideally per book. A common amateur mistake is what we call head hopping, switching point of view or perspective characters in the middle of a scene. It's one of the reasons I urge you to try writing from a first person point of view early in your writing career because it's harder to violate this cardinal rule when writing that way. Now, you may counter this advice by reminding me that many of the classics from the last century, and even before that, were written from an omniscient viewpoint, wherein the author jumps in and out of several characters' minds and points of view. Even some contemporary bestsellers do this, but they are rare and require that the authors do everything else with such stellar quality that this can be overlooked. That doesn't characterize my level of ability, and I've been succeeding as an author for 50 years. So I say, appreciate the classics, but don't emulate them. How to avoid head hopping and omniscient viewpoint? Imagine your point of view character, or perspective character, as your camera, your eyes and ears and mind, and limit yourself to only what they see, hear, and think. Remember, we're limited to his or her perspective. So why use the first person point of view? because it forces you to limit yourself to the mind, the emotions, and the senses of a single character. The most common form of first-person storytelling is casting the narrator as the protagonist, the main character. They're telling their own story. Another option is a first-person telling of the story from the perspective of someone other than the main character. I did this with my very first novel, which became a 13-book series. It was titled Margot, and thus she was the main character. But the first person narrator was her love interest and eventual husband. One advantage of an orbital character narrating in the first person is that it can highlight characteristics of the protagonist that he or she might not even be aware of, or might tend to hide if they were telling the story. Writing in first person can also contribute to strong character development. Some Famous novels rotate first-person narratives, such as with William Faulkner's As I Lay Dying. This requires careful planning and practice. You'll want to master the fundamentals of writing from the first-person point of view before trying something that complex. Now let me offer five tips for writing in first-person. While it's intuitive, it can be tricky. First, as I've said, avoid head-hopping. I know I said that writing in the first person should help you avoid this, but it's still easy to slip into. Remember that you're limited to your narrator's perspective. So while you can have that character speculate on what someone else is thinking, you can't unequivocally say what's in the other character's mind. In other words, you could write, Mary looked dubious, but you cannot write, Mary was dubious. You're writing from one character's perspective, not both, so you can't say unequivocally what she's thinking without writing from an omniscient point of view or being in her head. Next, craft a strong voice. Limiting yourself to one perspective character helps you effect a unique voice. What should your writing voice sound like? Imagine telling your best friend, have I got something to tell you. What comes next will be you in your most passionate voice. You at your most engaged is the voice we want on the page. How do you use your own writing voice in fiction? You lend it to your perspective character. 
they should come across as passionate as you do when telling an engaging story. Next, be careful not to switch tenses. Naturally, this tip applies to any writing point of view, but violating it can be especially jarring in first person. Example, I ran to my car and find I forgot my keys. Past tense is most common, but regardless, pick a tense and stick with it. Next, and you've probably heard this one, show, don't tell. Showing triggers the theater of your readers' minds, giving them a role in the reading experience. Telling merely spoon-feeds them information. Allow readers to deduce what's going on without simply being told everything. Note how Suzanne Collins accomplishes this in The Hunger Games. She writes, When I wake up, the other side of the bed is cold. My fingers stretch out, seeking Prim's warmth, but finding only the rough canvas cover of the mattress. She must have had bad dreams and climbed in with our mother. Of course she did. This is the day of reaping. Now, an amateur might have written, my sister Prim was scared because the day of reaping meant she could die. But Collins gives us enough to deduce this for ourselves. Finally, allow your other characters to shine. Crafting a single, believable, fleshed-out character doesn't mean the supporting cast should be ignored. This is the most common fear I hear from writers feeling limited by writing in the first person. They wonder how readers can get to know the other characters. Well, they get to know them the way their perspective character does, by deducing their personalities and their thoughts and their desires, etc., from what they say and how they look and what they do. Seen through the perspective of your first-person point of view narrator, they might be exposed as liars or genuine, credible or devious. If you're an outliner, you may want to take the time to map out their motives and attributes as this will give your protagonist more interesting people to, with whom to interact. If you're a pantser, writing by the seat of your pants as I do, your characters will be revealed as the story progresses. So that's a crash course on writing from a first-person point of view. If you found this video helpful, please like it, comment on it, share it, and subscribe to my channel. Also, make sure to check out my free writing assessment. You can find it at jerryjenkins.com slash quiz or by clicking the link in the description below. And if you're looking for help in other areas of your writing, feel free to take a look at my blog. You can find that at jerryjenkins.com slash blog. All the best with your writing, and I'll see you next time.